Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. In the 16 years since Roman Abramovich took over Chelsea, Chelsea has had 11 managers. And the merry-go-round has gone round once again, as Sarri has left for Juventus, with Frank Lampard coming in from Derby County after his debut managerial season. Is he the right man for Chelsea? And what could he bring to the club? In this video, we take a look at how Lampard could transform Chelsea. Just before that, if you're new around here and would like football content throughout the summer, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and press the bell if you want to be notified when we do upload twice a week. And if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up would be great. Now, let's get into it. So in order to help us evaluate Lampard so far, we'll take a look at these blocks. His introduction to Derby County, his achievements and transfers whilst he was there, his general Derby County tactics, and how these could transfer to Chelsea, and why Lampard was the chosen man. In 2017, Lampard began the final stages of his coaching badges with his club, Chelsea. Just over a year later, in May 2018, he would find himself being announced as the permanent manager of Derby County. In general, there was a sense of optimism around the club when he took over. Many fans were hoping the man who had played under elite managers like Ancelotti, Mourinho and more would be able to bring that tactical nous to the club. There was a slight worry about his inexperience, but Lampard was experienced as a leader, having captained Chelsea and England. It was a post that came with risks for Lampard, as the previous year Derby had done well, getting to the playoffs before missing out in the semi-final, so there would be high expectations. In addition, Derby weren't shy of sacking underperforming managers. Gary Rowett chose to leave, but before him, the club went through six managers in three years. But armed with his backroom staff, including former Chelsea youth team manager Jody Morris and Chris Jones, Lampard took charge. So what did he achieve whilst he was there? Well, overall his time there was a success. He was charged with maintaining a good league position and injecting some youth into the squad. And being promoted would have been great, but it wasn't necessarily a prerequisite. In the end, he guided them to a playoff position, finishing 6th after a wobble, and he got them to the final, which was a step better than what Rao had managed. But in the end, he lost out in the final by a single goal to Aston Villa and they weren't promoted. Let's take a look at his transfer policy, as this may give us an indication of what he wants to achieve at Chelsea. While as previously discussed, the Derby squad he arrived to was ageing, with most of the team to have received significant game time in 17-18 being over 28. And Derby had also sold two of their younger and better players in Andreas Weimann and top scorer Matej Vidra. This was counterbalanced by Lampard getting rid of older players such as Chris Baird, Darren Bent and Joe Ledley. To the credit of Lampard, a common mistake managers make when trying to bring down the average age of a squad is to try to do it all in one season. We've seen this previously at Chelsea with Andre Villas-Boas and it seems Lampard learned from this, keeping the likes of Huddleston, Carson and Bryson around to give the squad some experience. But to bring down the average age, Lampard used the loan system expertly, bringing in Wilson, Tomori and Mason from Premier League academies and they all contributed significantly. Other notable signings were Marriott, Holmes, who both brought down the average age, but he also brought in experience in Martin Waghorn and Ashley Cole. Well, how did the squad he shaped allow him to play? While Lampard had two main formations, he played with a 4-3-3 57% of the time and switched to a 4-2-3-1 39% of the time. But it's important to know that in the game, they were fluid and could switch to a flat 4-4-2, a 4-4-2 diamond and many more. Let's start with what they aimed to do in the offensive phase. Lampard wanted his team to play a quick, high-energy possession style of football in general and wasn't afraid to attack through the center or to use the flanks. When building up from the back, Tomori and Kyo were tasked with the majority of the build-up, as shown by both of them averaging the most passes per game. The centre-back stayed tight with a defensive midfielder forming a build-up triangle, allowing them to use combination play to try and play around the press. However, if the defensive midfielder is closed down, Lampard got one of his central midfielders to drop and assist them, forming a build-up box. During this phase, the full-backs do not advance too high up the pitch. Instead, they provide extreme width, which gives them many passing options, whilst creating gaps between the opposition if they chose to press. But if all passing options were occupied, Lampard liked his centre-backs to be comfortable enough to carry the ball forwards and break the pressing line, and therefore give them the numerical advantage in midfield, and this was usually done by Tomori. Once the ball progressed into midfield, we begin to see the fullbacks move higher up the pitch. They were key to Lampard's attacking width as they advanced fairly high up the pitch. This is shown by Bogle registering 9 assists, Forsyth 4 assists, and Malone 2 of his own. With the fullbacks providing this width, the wingers, usually Lawrence and Wilson, could come inside the pitch. If they played a 4-2-3-1, Mount would already be in the attacking position, however, in a 4-3-3, Mount would still advance, leaving the other two holding. 
the overload in the center would either leave the center backs in space or the central overload would allow them to play forward if the center backs were marked. This would mean that there were plenty of passing options as the wingers took up the half space. From there, there would be quick interchanges in order to create chances. Jack Marriott would always threaten in behind with his pace in order to create more space in the midfield. It is interesting to note though that Derby weren't the best at creating clear chances as they often shot from outside the box. In fact, they had the lowest percentage of shots from within the box and the highest from outside. But generally, the result of these tactics was an interesting possession team with the 5th highest average possession. However, their shot locations meant they only scored the 8th most goals from open play. In defence, the major difference between Lampard and Rowett's sides become evident. With a younger, more energetic side, Lampard was able to encourage a counter-pressing system. As soon as they lost the ball, Derby engaged in a lateral press, forcing the opponent to one side of the pitch. This is because as we discussed, in attack, Derby would have their players central so the space for the opposition to attack was out wide, but this played into Derby's hands as they could condense that side of the pitch during the press. They would then compact the space and go about trying to win it back. But just in case they lost the ball, Lampard made great use of safety players, always keeping some men behind the ball. However, there was still space behind the defenders for the opposition to attack into. This high pressing method meant that Derby conceded the third least short passes per match as they harried their opponents. But if they were forced to defend for long periods of time, they would usually drop into a 4-4-2, with the winger remaining high and the rest of the midfield collapsing into a flat 4. This would mean that when they did win the ball, they were primed to launch a counter-attack where they could use Marriott's pace. They did this well, scoring the most counter-attack goals in the league. So did Lampard actually improve Derby County? Well, the stats make for interesting reading. They finished in the same league position, with a similar points tally and more. However, progress is visible as their pressing reduced the number of short passes conceded, they had more counter-attack goals and they had more shots per game. But on the other hand, their style of defending led them to concede the most counter-attack goals in the league. And their choice of shot location meant they had more shots from outside the box, which means that their expected points tally actually had them to finish lower mid-table. But that means that in his debut season, he performed as well as a manager who had experience and was considered to have done a great job. So the big question is, how will this transfer to Chelsea? Well, Chelsea will have a transfer ban, meaning that they won't be able to register any new players. But Lampard, Morris and co may therefore have to turn to the academy. Frank Lampard may be the perfect man to do this, as Mason Mount and Tomori were with him at Derby, but the likes of Rhys James may also get a look in. The other good news is that it won't be a complete tactical overhaul. They share some traits with Sarri's team, such as the desire to play out from the back, inverting wingers, as well as using fullbacks for width. So let's have a tentative look at what this potential 11 might look like, and what he may look to do tactically. Well, Kepa will remain in goal, and Rudiger will probably be at centre back. Lampard may opt for academy graduate Christensen over Louise. He values experience, so it's unlikely that Aspilicueta will be displaced, though Reese James may get some game time. At left back, Lampard may opt for Emerson, as he defends better than Alonso while still getting forward. Jorginho and Kante will be in the midfield, and, at least to start the season, Mason Mount will complete that. When defending, they could form a double pivot of Jorginho and Kante, or if they defended as a three, Kante will likely return to the central defensive position. However, when building up, it will be Jorginho tasked with starting the play. Up top, Pulisic can plug in on the right or the left, and William or Pedro will take up the other role. But long term, Lampard may try to reintegrate hudson Odoi after his injury. Centre forward will be interesting. He used a smaller, more mobile forward at Derby, which doesn't profile like any of the Chelsea strikers. The closest to this would be Michi Bashuai, but I think this season Tammy Abraham may finally get a chance. He may profile significantly differently to Marriott, but Lampard has had the chance to see Abraham perform for a season with Villa in the Championship and his preference for youth may help him. So why was Lampard chosen? Well, most of the top managers are locked down at their current clubs. The most obvious big names unemployed are Mourinho, Wenger and Allegri. But Mourinho would be unlikely to return for yet another spell, Wenger would not take this job up due to his links with Arsenal, and Allegri has chosen to take a sabbatical. And even if this wasn't the case, with a transfer ban, it would be hard to attract a top manager to an aging squad. And Lampard has shown that he has the ability to lower this average age and work with youth players while still blending them with the experience, so he could bring this aspect to the club. This use of youth could help secure these players to contracts, given the recent hudson Odoi links to Bayern. Also, due to Lampard's status as a respected club figure, incidents like the Kepa-Sari substitution refusal are unlikely to occur. And yes, 
There is an element of romanticism with a club legend returning as manager. But above all, Lampard is young, hungry and proved in the championship that he's a great manager. Some may think it's a bad call due to his inexperience and being occasionally tactically outmaneuvered in the championship, but time will tell. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of this appointment? Let's have a discussion in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more like this. Drop suggestions of what you'd like to see in the comments section. And that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.